But you ever been in a bar and they've got a promotion where you can get $1 beers, but your choices are only like PBR in a can or like Miller High Life? This video is gonna be kind of like that. We're comparing the Ruger Max 9 to the Taurus GX4. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David and I'm excited to be talking to you today about two Micro 9 pistols that are both pretty high capacity in their own right. It is the Taurus GX4 and the Ruger Max 9. Now, if you haven't seen them already, I've already reviewed both of these pistols on my channel. And if you have seen them, you probably know how this is gonna go. But we've got both of these guns, so we're gonna put them side by side and I'll share with you my thoughts on each. And before we go any further to my YouTube manual reviewer, this is the Taurus GX4 in my hand and this is what it looks like on the manufacturer's website, same gun. And this is the Ruger Max 9 and and this is what it looks like on that manufacturer's website. So same gun, both of these guns are unmodified and this is the most advertiser friendly content you will find on YouTube for years to come. It is that advertiser friendly. <laughs> So as you're on your way to the comments section to accuse me of making bad dad jokes, be sure and hit that like button and let's jump right in. So as far as price is concerned and the value that you get with both of these guns, we'll start there. The Taurus GX4 is going to come in a plastic clamshell case. It's going to come with two 11 round magazines with a flush base pad made by Mechagar and they are super duper high quality magazines. Whereas depending on which model of the Ruger you get is going to come with a 10 round flush base plate model or a pinky extension and a 12 round magazine. So averaging 11 rounds each. So the guns are pretty well matched in that regard. However, Ruger does include a pinky extension where you can swap out the flat base plate in the box the gun comes with. So you can get all your fingers on the Ruger, no problem. And that's gonna make for a better shooting experience. At least you would think because your pinky can contribute to controlling recoil. The GX4 actually has interchangeable back straps. And you can see here that I've got the Glock grip angle style back strap. And that actually makes the gun, like I don't have my finger on the bottom of this, but this gun is actually more controllable than the Ruger is. So having back straps on the gun is a nice little value. I paid 480 for this gun in the second quarter 2021, and I paid 392, which is full MSRP on the GX4. The Ruger is optics ready right out of the box. It has an optics pocket milled in there. It has co-witness iron sights, and it has a tritium front sight with a fiber optic pipe behind it, a TF style front sight, whereas the Taurus GX4 accepts Glock sights and it has a blacked out rear sight and a white dot front sight that honestly, it's not a bad set of sight. It's, it is a very low profile set of sights and very intuitive to shoot with. I'm sure at some point in the next quarter or two, Taurus is going to drop a Toro model of this and it's probably going to be an MSRP of pretty much what this gun sells for. So the values in my opinion are roughly comparable between the two. This has better iron sights technically, but with sights being a very personal sort of thing, you can get whatever Glock sights you would want for this. And honestly, the sights they provide on this gun aren't the worst. So from a value perspective, I'll call both of these a tie. Getting into the actual frames and ergonomics, which is gonna tie into shootability because it greatly influences shootability because on these guns, you don't have enough space for your support hand to really contribute to recoil management like you would on a full size gun. So the geometry of the frames is a much bigger deal on these guns as far as rapid shootability with these things. The Ruger has more of a traditional 1911 style grip angle, which you would think I would like being somebody who competes with 2011 guns. However, the frame is sort of boxy. It hits really low in my palm with creates kind of a pressure point where it lands on my palm. It's got a manual safety that I don't love. In shooting this gun, it just doesn't feel like it's planted into the hand. It has a lot of yaw when you work your way through the trigger. Whereas the Taurus GX4 has these interchangeable back straps. It seems like I'm not alone. People are preferring kind of this Glock style back strap for the gun and the texture on the GX4 is significantly better than what's on the Ruger. So it actually bites into your hand and stays planted. I feel like I've got the gun planted in my hand better. It feels more stable. And as I address the trigger, I feel like I can hold it 
steadier more. So despite the Taurus not coming with a pinky extension or a longer magazine, the gun actually is more controllable and easier to shoot accurately than the gun with better sights. So the Taurus is going to win the grip division as far as I'm concerned. Getting into the triggers, and this is going to be very important. Both of these guns have what I consider to be appropriately weighted triggers for the category that they compete in, which is the Micro 9 Conceal Carry segment. They both have trigger pulls of about five pounds. The Ruger has more of a recurve style trigger with the trigger blade safety, and the Taurus has more of a flat style safety that breaks at about 90 degrees with a trigger blade safety. The Taurus has a super firm wall with a light take up, so you get on that wall and you can hold it there all day as you line up your sights to make a precise shot, and then when you do break a shot, very little over travel, and the reset is the only thing that keeps the trigger from being top shelf exceptional. It's honestly not bad, and for guns in this segment, it's actually quite good. This might be the best trigger in this segment. I haven't shot the SNW Shield yet, but I think the Taurus really has a strong trigger. Where's the Ruger Max? Has the creepiest trigger. Uh, the SIG P365 has a pretty creepy trigger as well, but it's much more predictable. The length of the creep, which means from the time you feel the wall with your finger to the time that the shot actually breaks, there's a long, almost like a double action pull you have to pull through before the gun breaks its shot. The grip is kind of wobbly in your hand. It doesn't really lock into your hand particularly well. It introduces a bunch of yaw and it has a trigger with a ton of creep. But if you get shooting fast, it becomes very easy to pull shots off target with. So far and away, and I can't oversell, the GX4 has a significantly better trigger than the Ruger Max. As far as the slide and the sights are concerned, they both have forward cocking serrations. The finish on the GX4 slide looks to be a higher quality finish than the black oxide finish on the Ruger slide. And just kind of looking at the aesthetic choices of the product designer who sort of made this thing, this looks like a gut, what somebody in the 1980s said like, hey, draw what a gun's gonna look like in 2020. The slide cuts and machining and the, just the aesthetics of the Max kind of look like a DeLorean or something like that. Whereas the GX4 is a little more understated. It's like, yeah, it looks like a gun, what of it? it it's not a particularly handsome gun, but it's not ugly either. It's just highly functional. I prefer the aesthetics, but it's honestly not a big deal because who really cares about aesthetics? The slides on both guns work just like they're supposed to. As far as aftermarket support is concerned, magazine costs are gonna be about the same. You can buy two uh, Max 9 magazines for 50 bucks, whereas you can buy, it's about 25 to $30, depending on the capacity you get for the GX4. So again, the magazines are comparably priced. Uh, holster support is popping up for both models. I think that the GX4 is kind of lagging right now as I film this in kind of mid-June of 2021 is when I'm filming, but I gotta believe that the holster support is gonna get there as this gun continues to gain in popularity. The Max 9 does have good holster support right now as well. You may not find your particular favorite brand holster for this gun, but lots of other good Kydex manufacturers are making holsters for the Max 9 currently. So we'll call the aftermarket support a tie. They're roughly the same. Getting into the actual maintenance of the guns and this doesn't really matter to me because I hate cleaning guns. I just keep them oiled and they keep working, especially production guns. But the GX4 has this little basically flathead slot right here that you have to turn to make the slide come off the frame and they give you a keychain with a little nub on it. Or you could just use the rim of like a cartridge or a flathead screwdriver or something like that and you can take the gun apart. Almost tool free. Whereas the Max 9 has this ridiculous little trap door that you have to like push down, then you hold the slide slightly out of battery, then you come around to this side and you punch through that hole right there to knock out a pin that allows the gun to come apart and you can take the thing apart. This is the fiddliest takedown of a modern semi-auto pistol that I have dealt with and I think it's terrible. I'm not wild about the takedown on the GX4, but given the option between the two, uh, this is a much better system in my opinion on how it comes apart. So since these guns compete in the same segment, I'll just kind of hold them up and show you like dimensionally they're almost identical. There it is with the Max 9 in front and I can tell from just holding it like this, the Ruger is a little bit longer in a superficial kind of way, uh, front to back, and you can see the Max 9 kind of hanging out. The GX4, because of the large back strap that I've got installed, uh, has a longer front to back grip, but I think that contributes to making the GX4 a little bit easier to shoot. Top to bottom, they're roughly the same. Uh, I would say that the Max 9 is 
perhaps slightly thinner. The grip length is basically the same between the two guns. So I mean, these guns are in the same niche. They compete head to head. If you're interested in one, you're probably going to be interested in the other. The Max 9 is produced by Ruger out of Arizona. It's an American company with an American made guns. And the Taurus, I believe is assembled in Georgia from what I'm hearing. Uh, however, the frame at least is made in Brazil because they had to legally stamp on the frame that it was made in Brazil right there. So it may be assembled in Georgia, but I think that they're still producing at least the parts in Brazil. As far as the warranties are concerned and the customer service that you expect. Now this category, you hope that you never have to get into because it means that you bought a bad gun, but the actual customer service, since they do have a Bainbridge plant, that's where you would be shipping the guns. If something came up with your GX4, whereas Ruger has an Arizona plant and that's where you'd be shipping the guns to if you had to service them. Unfortunately, I've had the distinct pleasure of having to deal with warranty with both of these companies. Now, I'll start with the Taurus experience. So I've actually had to use Taurus customer support twice now and I have to say that it's not great. Uh, but it's a minimum of 30 minutes every time you call. You're gonna sit on hold for at least 15 to 20 minutes and then their process of actually just processing a warranty claim takes about 10 minutes of talking to the person. Whereas when I called Ruger, I got to speak with a human after maybe 10 seconds on hold as they just transferred the call. And the customer service guy, he actually understood what I was telling him about guns. Whereas I spoke with the Taurus customer service, uh, two different gals I spoke with over there, and it was obvious that they just really didn't know much about guns. They were reading off a script and that's probably why it took a while for them to sort of process what I was asking. So I had to ship my Taurus G3C back for warranty service. They quoted me a 12 week turnaround time. However, they returned the gun to me in just eight weeks. They set the bar low on my expectation and just sort of sailed over. However, Ruger got the gun back to me in nine days. And if you consider that the gun is shipping, two days each way, two days from me to their plant and two days back from the plant back to me, they serviced the gun super quick. They gave me a very detailed write-up on what had happened with the gun. So I knew exactly what they saw with the gun. Now, if you saw my video on the Taurus G3C, you know that the issue was the chamber was cut incorrectly. And I believe they did ream it because the ammo fit into the chamber better, but that was not written up on the warranty sheet when I got it back. They just wrote up that they adjusted the trigger bar, which would be unrelated to the issue that I was having with the gun. On the Ruger, they told me they replaced the frame. They included a new wrench. I don't know why because the one that came with the gun was still at the box too, but they gave me another wrench and they gave me a cleaning towel for my trouble and having the gun be away. So if you had to pick a product based around which company has better customer service, it's unquestionably Ruger. Ruger wins by miles. So if I hand you both of these guns in the gun store and you were to just kind of pick based on just sort of handling the gun and pointing at stuff, you know, in a safe direction, not at other human beings, and you were to just sort of feel the guns, feel the stick of the controls and the weight of everything. You shake them, you can hear that. It's a pretty good maraca we got going right there. Whereas the GX4, uh, there's not really, there's a little bit of wiggle, but it's a chassis style gun. There's almost no wiggle in the slide to the frame. The GX4 feels like a quality firearm in the way that the G3 series honestly doesn't. Like this feels in the same echelon as a proper uh, service caliber pistol. Whereas this kind of feels like it's a consumer grade pistol, which unfortunately it is. So just on perceived quality, I'm definitely gonna have to give that one to Taurus. So this brings us to the point where you participate. You jump in that comment section and you let me know which of these two pistols you'd prefer and neither is certainly an option, but be sure and fill out what you would rather have in this niche. And if you've made it this far, please go ahead and hit that like button before you sign off. I've picked the video of the Taurus GX4 for you to watch and my review of the Ruger Max 9 for you to watch. I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one.